discussion. Thank you. Please. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Amma ba'ad. Rabbi Shrami Sadri. Baya Siri Amri. Wahdul Ubratan Milisani. Yaf Kau Kodi. First of all, I would like, uh, we would like actually to thank the organizer um, for giving us the opportunity to present our research paper entitled The Impact of Global Financial Crisis on Islamic and Conventional Stock in the DCC Stock Markets and Application of Art and Drug Methods. Uh, this is a kind of cross-border collaboration, even though I'm Indonesian, but I'm working in Bahrain between uh, Dr. Raditya Sukmana of Universitas Erlangga in Surabaya, Indonesia, and of course myself, Sutai Umid Hidayat, uh, from uh, University College of Bahrain. So, first thing we would like to share is uh, the reason why uh, we decided to choose this uh, study. Um, the main point is actually here, the 2008 financial crisis. Everyone knows that the 2008 financial crisis has affected uh, stock markets around the world. And not only stock markets, large financial institutions also have collapsed or been bought out. And governments in even the wealthiest nations have had to come up or to come up with rescue packages to bail out their financial systems. However, uh, to, to the best of our knowledge, the impacts of the crisis into Islamic stock markets are still in the question. And even some experts um, uh, in Islamic finance claim that uh, the crisis could affect less uh, into Islamic uh, financial system as compared to uh, conventional financial system because in all financial, trans uh, all financial transactions in Islamic finance must be trade-based and asset link. So therefore, the impact should be less. However, we should investigate this claim empirically. Therefore, both of us try actually uh, to evaluate the impact of the crisis uh, into uh, Islamic stock and as compared to the conventional stock. And the best place to, uh, to, to, to conduct this study is actually the GCC. Why? These are the reasons why we should choose the GCC. Number one, the GCC region is actually uh, is a home base to many large pioneers in the Islamic finance industry. We know the first Islamic commercial bank was established in the GCC, uh, by Islamic Bank. Also, Islamic, Islamic Development Bank is based in, uh, in Jeddah, uh, Saudi Arabia, which is notably one of the members uh, in, in the GCC. And Bahrain is also known as the pioneer in the sovereign sukuk. So, this is the first reason. The second reason, and it is also confirmed by, by many speakers uh, uh, in the previous days, the GCC countries collectively account for around 41% of the total Sharia compliant asset worldwide. By the end of 2007, this one, and I think uh, two days ago, somebody said now already around 42% in 2009. And Islamic banks in the GCC also control a market share close to 15% of the regional banking system's asset, yeah, which is quite significant. And one of its members, which is Bahrain, is the host to several important Islamic finance infrastructures such as AAOIP, and then IIFM, IRA, and other things. And all member countries in the GCC encourage the development of Islamic banking and finance in their respective countries, yeah, including Oman. Oman recently already uh, embarked into Islamic finance industry also. So now full, all, all GCC countries um, uh, now already uh, what, uh, have both Islamic and conventional um, uh, finance uh, in, in their uh, financial system. Uh, just a kind of uh, intermezzo for, for all of you, because you know why I, I brought this map? Because when I came to, uh, to, uh, to a seminar, we talked a lot about GC, uh, the GCC, but unfortunately somebody came to me, where is Bahrain? It's located. Is it near to Bahamas? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised at the time. <laughs> and then, um, even though we talk about uh, what, uh, the, the GCC economy and, and other things, but sometimes we don't know the, the, the map uh, or the location of them. If you can see, this is 
This is uh, the map for the GCC. And by the way, the official name for the GCC is actually the Cooperation Council for the Arab States of Gulf, not the GCC. <laughs> this is the official name, but it's also known as the GCC. And we should know also the difference in size between all member countries. If you, if you see Saudi Arabia, it's so big, but if you can find out Bahrain, can you find out Bahrain? <laughs> But Bahrain is not this one, this is Qatar. Bahrain is one. It's too small. Yeah. And uh, that's why Bahrain is known as financial center. Normally financial center is small, like Singapore or uh, what other, other financial center. Labuan, small but uh, no, uh, effective. No, yeah. <coughs> not because I'm from Bahrain. <laughs> and, and this Oman and other things. And these are the GCC flags. And some countries they have some similarities uh, to reflect that they are Muslim countries, and also at the same time the ruling families in the GCC they are actually uh, um, or connected or they have yeah yeah related they are related. Okay, after this intermezzo, let us go again back uh, uh, back to the serious uh, uh, things. Yeah. Let me brief you about the facts about the GCC. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, economic uh, uh, term. The first one, the nominal GDP of GCC increased by 7.2 percent uh, in 2012, uh, yeah, according to uh, GER, yeah, uh, Gulf Economic Review, released by NCB. This is obviously uh, very high growth, yeah, as compared even to developed markets. And the GCC experience in increase in export earnings over the past few years, as we know that oil price increased. Yeah? This is the difference between GCC and other, part, uh, other countries in other parts of the world. GCC will be happy if the, if the oil price increases. For us in, in Indonesia or in Malaysia or in other parts of the world, we will be unhappy if the oil price increases <laughs> because it will, it will create inflation. But for GCC, when the oil price increases, their earnings will increase automatically. Because oil earnings account for more than 70% of the GCC's export and fiscal revenues. And obviously, these countries have accumulated a lot of surpluses from years to years. And much of these surpluses has effectively been invested abroad. Yeah? Previously in the US and in, in the Europe, and then they started to look at emerging market as well. Or simply saved in the form of gold and foreign exchange reserve. Ah. Similar to its size, Saudi Arabia is also the biggest economy in the, in the, in the region. Yeah. And similar also to its size, Bahrain is also the smallest uh, economy in the region. If you look at the chart, Saudi Arabia is the biggest and Bahrain is the smallest. Yeah. Now we go into the, uh, into the literatures uh, on the impact of the crisis into the GCC economy. Alhamdulillah, we managed uh, to find some uh, literatures, although that not, not, not that many. For example, El Abudi and Gates, and uh, later on after this one. So, uh, this study uh, found the impact of the financial crisis in, uh, on the economy of the GCC has been mild as compared to, uh, to uh, other countries in, in the world. Uh, due to the following reason, the first one we know that the GCC is actually a group of six wealthy nations, so they have plenty of uh, uh, resources that can be used actually uh, for fiscal policy to, to minimize the impact of the crisis. Uh, second, GCC banks were not as much directly exposed actually to the securitized and structured financial products. Uh, and, and in fact, this is, this is the point where why uh, GCC economy is not uh, uh, that much affected. However, it doesn't mean there is no impact at all. Batini et al. In, uh, in, in, uh, in their studies argue that the stock markets in the GCC are affected by the crisis. Especially uh, when the, uh, following September 2008, stock prices in the GCC have declined rapidly due to number one, shortage of global liquidity. Global liquidity uh, 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 has uh, experienced uh, shortage. What will be the implication? Increase in cost of borrowing. All of us know that actually cost of borrowing is determined also by rating. If the rating for developed, the, the, uh, developed countries 
uh, reduced and the cost of borrowing in, the, in developed countries uh, uh, increase, automatically countries like GCC, which are considered to be uh, as an uh, 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 emerging market, um, will, will obviously, obviously will increase as well because the premium, the premium for the emerging market uh, is there. So increase in cost of borrowing restrict the expansion for the, for the companies and companies uh, is, uh, are re reluctant actually to expand their businesses. As a result, uh, they do not give um, uh, more dividend and obviously it will give signal to the stock market, yeah, it's, it's dropping. This is according to Batini et al. And uh, by numbers we found in LRB uh, uh, that from January 1 to October 20, 2008, it is clear that the stock markets around GCC are affected, whereby Dubai financial market uh, was the most affected. The, the, the value declined by 44%, while Kuwait was the least uh, affected uh, because it declined only by 14%. Only. However, <coughs> this data or, or those previous studies do not come out with the, or do not segregate between the impact of the crisis into Islamic stock and conventional stock. Here, our study tries or attempts actually to, to, to investigate the impact of the crisis into Islamic as compared uh, to conventional stock markets. Now, this is our objective. The study aims to see the resil uh, resilience of the Islamic stock indices in the GCC as compared to conventional stock indices in facing the global financial crisis. And we expect this study can provide a new guideline for the investor before making investment decision in the GCC equity markets. I pass to Dr. Aditya to continue the presentation. Thank you. Okay, the data that we have, been, we have collected is retrieved from Bloomberg database. And the Islamic stock market, we take the Morgan Stanley Composite Index for all countries. And we use to get the robust result, we intentionally use the daily data. So the daily data start from June 1, 2006 to January 29, 2012. In terms of the crisis, uh, variable crisis that we use, we follow the argument by Ella Budi. Uh, in his paper, he mentioned that the crisis hit in September 2008. So that means we use, uh, we did not zero for the period start from June 1, 2006 up until September 30 and October 1, 2008 <coughs> until the end of the observation we did not as one to, to reflect the crisis <coughs> so the method is because this is time series we need to check the time uh, the integration test and we use, uh, later on we use the R scars uh, okay. this is the data that we uh, are able to collect unfortunately we could not get the data for like let's say Abu Dhabi the Islamic stock market as well as uh, Dubai the Islamic stock market and all other are uh, uh, MSCI Morgan Stanley Composite Index and GCC here uh, Islamic uh, GCC means is a region Islamic stock market so it's composed of all other uh, countries and this is the integration test it's passed the integration test uh, I1 <coughs> This is the Islamic stock market in Bahrain, and the upper one is the conventional. I intentionally put not at the same date because this is 2011, so I want to make like this. If you see here, uh, September. found out that uh, in the case of uh, Bahrain, uh, whether it's conventional or Islamic, those two stock markets are moving together. 
similar with the one of our presenter yesterday. One more cross. Ah, this one. Okay. If we take uh, September 2000. Uh, before. Before. Oh, it's moving by itself. Yeah. He wants to go back to. Before this. The first job. The first job. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what percentage of the companies, uh, you know, in the two uh, that's why yeah. uh, we have mentioned that there's our limitation. We could not get the percentage of how many is the mm -hmm. like market share of this Islamic stock. But, uh, the MSI indices aren't they public? You, couldn't you see the components of the indices? No, we tried to find it <coughs> on our database. We shouldn't find it. Because if 90% uh, of the MSI presented index are shown in the line, then, then we'll there's no need yeah. to be studying. But the patterns are not showing in mean, here, yeah. so it's just this You know, um, we just an advice as an older brother to younger brother. Um, <laughs> nowadays, uh, with the technology, you can run this integration, co-integration very, very, very quickly, as long as you get a hold of the data set. But you have to have a story behind it. I was, uh, maybe you have said it, I missed the story. I mean, let's say we agree, in the last two slides you say that, okay, so the Arab Kuwait is not less effective. Yeah. And you argument that it is immunized from the rest of the world. Yeah. But what is, the, what is the evidence that uh, you have to come up, maybe there is, maybe foreign ownership restriction in the domestic market. So you have to tell a story. You know, nowadays, you know, five years down the line, your kids can run it in five minutes. They'll be doing as a class, class long project. So any paper that you write, I mean, from why you are doing this, you are using your talent. And another thing is that uh, at the same time in the financial crisis, we had the Arab Spring problem, which may have been a factor in... You have to suffer exactly what happens. is causing this. If you can pinpoint one of the reasons, that is helpful. And also look at you from the, let's say if I'm an investor, I'm interested in the GCC market. I mean, what lesson can I learn? Can I diversify my portfolio there? When you see the two series are integrated, there's a less diversification. So those kind of stories you have to bring in, okay? I just an advice. Yeah, thank you very much, Samir. Any other questions? <coughs> well, it's excellent. Thank okay. you very much.